Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Hole in One Show podcast presented by Bell Bank and Shields. I'm your host, Dave Schultz. Hole in One Show podcast. Welcome in. This is the first of a six episode series featuring the Hole in One Show and the champions of each episode. On this show, we're going to talk golf, professional golf, local golf, junior golf, and maybe a little of other things in between. Uh, we've got the U.S. Open to recap on this episode. We've got a good buddy of mine, Dave Morgan, is going to join us in the second segment. And then we've also got, we have uh, Zach Scarprood and Rose Solberg, the state champion, girls state champion in Class A, and the Class A state runner-up in studio today. We're going to talk U.S. Open like I mentioned, but first, I want to bring in Taylor Henriksen. Taylor won the third episode on the Hole in One Show Season 4. He uh, He's a three-time participant of the show. Follows the Hole in One show on Facebook. Always a good qualifier, and you made it three times. First of all, Taylor, welcome to the show. It's good to be here, Dave. It's yeah, kind of cool it, doing a podcast. What's that? It's kind of cool doing a podcast. Well, here we are. You earned it. You New earned experience. it. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to highlight the winner of each episode and have you have them on the first segment. So let's start with you, Taylor. You won the third episode. Uh, first, a little bit of background about you. Where are you from, and uh, what do you do? Uh, so originally I'm from Barnesville, Minnesota. Uh, I graduated from there in 2008 and then went to college at Valley City State. Yeah. Played golf out there. Um, and then after I graduated there in 2012, I moved back to the area in Fargo. Been there ever since. Uh, right now I'm working at CNH Industrial, which is the Case Tractor plant here in Fargo. Yeah. Um, been there for about two and a half years now. Do they have a good golf time off policy? Can you get on the golf course quite a bit? <laughs> There's a couple of tournaments that we get to play in. There's a couple really? scrambles for work, yeah. Oh, I bet they yeah. want you on their team. I, As of last year, yes. <laughs> it, it was the first time I got to do it, and our plant manager has already claimed me for his team going forward. So <laughs> The boss. The boss yes. wants you on his team. That's a, yeah, that's a good so thing. So I've already secured at least one day off. That's uh, great. Well, you've, it's been great to have you on the show. You've been on three times, like I mentioned. Uh, this was your first time making the championship show. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Now, let's talk about the conditions on the show. Uh, for your episode specifically, it was midday. It was a hurricane. Mm -hmm. It was blowing 40 miles an hour. And I want to know, did that actually help with the nerves? Because you were on TV, obviously the inter little interview that we do, then you step yeah. up to the tee and try and hit the shots, and then it's blowing 40. Mm -hmm. I mean, how'd you handle that? I think it lowers expectations a little bit. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's it's only a 150 yard shot, which on paper, you know, is it's not that difficult. But when you throw in a 40 mile an hour wind, you kind of <laughs> your your acceptable shot kind of widens, I right, guess. To right. and it, I, th I don't even think mine ended up on the green. It was just onto the fringe. But uh, you know, in a day like that, you just need something that's good enough, and that's what it was. Well, and the thing on the show, we raise money for charity. So the closest shot of the show wins a hundred or a thousand dollars, thanks to Shields. And then you get a, a Bell Bank Charity bonus putt where you get to double that donation potentially from 1000 to 2000 And Chris Larson was your pro on that show. And each show he each shot he hits on the green adds $250. So what happened was Chris stepped up in this 40-mile-an-hour win and hit two just two darts up there on the <laughs> yeah. green. And he yeah. kind of set you all up for yeah. a great show. So he had $500 extra to start. And then you guys stepped up. And where'd you hit it to? Where did I hit it to? Yeah, where'd you hit it to? I to think win I the show. To the, I think it was the back right edge of the, uh, was on the fringe or just even off the fringe. It was like 43 feet. Um, not great, but I mean, I would have taken it any other day. If I was just out playing with buddies, I would take that every day. No maybe. doubt. You get up and down for par. So yes. it's 43 feet, one inch. Uh, it was the only, it was the, the, everybody else hit in the river or way right. So the only, the only <laughs> other person that was measurable was 54 feet, seven inches. And so everybody's asking me, gosh, it's too bad you had a wind, windy day. I'm like, hey, look, he hit yeah. it on the green, Chris. Uh, extra $500. We had $1,500 mm -hmm. going to the green, and then it became the perfect game. What'd you do on the green? Yeah, I was probably more nervous about the putt, honestly. Um, it didn't look like it. <laughs> I got up there. It's it a 20-foot putt, little uphill, left to right. Uh, I do remember that. I missed the first one, just barely made a little bit of an adjustment and got lucky enough to roll the second one in. So and you pretty good. And you played for St. Jude's. Yes. And what's the background there? Why'd you play for St. Jude's? Um... The previous couple of years, I'd played for other charities. This one, I just wanted to mix it up a little bit. And, you know, I like what they do, what they stand for. So I figured it'd be Absolutely. a good one to go with. No personal ties to it, but, you know, what they do is, you know, I'm all aboard. So anything I can do to help. That's fantastic. It was $2,500 thanks to Shields, Bell Bank, and Theraldson Ethanol. So great job. And then uh, you revisit us on the championship episode. And now talk about playing under the lights. 
That was cool. I've not done that before. Um, I mean, there's some places, you know, down south that have the light up driving ranges. I've not even done that. <laughs> Closest I've got to is Top Golf. So yeah, it was really cool to be able to do that. Um, the wind went down a little bit, but then the nerves go up a little bit. So it kind of offset each other. Um, didn't hit two great shots there either. I think I was a little long on both of those. If I remember right, I'm not exactly sure, but um, it was a really cool experience. It's really fun to be able to do that. Now, looking ahead, love to have you back on the show, uh, but looking ahead for your tournament schedule, do you play tournaments around the area? Typically, I do. Um, normally, I play the Red River Amateur and yeah. either the Pine of Palm or last year played the Birchmont for the first time. Um, I don't think I'll have a lot of tournaments in the schedule this year just because actually a month ago, I just had my first kid. Hey, congratulations. So, yes, thank you. So I've been Boy or girl name? Boy, his name is Axel. All right. Um yeah, so almost exactly a month ago. So I've honestly not even been on the course yet this year. That's I've been a good dad right there. Been very busy helping you mom said, out. You said first? First. Oh. Life yep. changes, doesn't it? Yep. So That's why we're here. Yeah, it's so all of my vacation time, everything's going straight to that. So <laughs> I don't think I can take a week off for a golf tournament this uh, year. But Axel's gonna Axel's gonna hurt your handicap. But that's he is. well worth it, right? Yes, yeah, it's worth it because you know, a couple of years from now he'll be out there with me. So that's it'll be cool. absolutely worth it. So this year may take I mean, I'm still gonna play, obviously, but I don't know how competitive I'll get, play a couple of scrambles maybe, but yeah, it's a little bit different summer for me this year. Well, congratulations. Thank on you. Obviously, the show, but more importantly, being a dad to Axel. <laughs> yeah. And I and, uh, hope everybody's happy and healthy at home. And, and thanks for being with us on the Hole in One Show podcast. Mm -hmm. A nice job. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Folks, right after this, Dave Morgan, a good buddy of mine, he talks U.S. Open and his personal relationship with Wyndham Clark. Any bank can tell you they have a rock-solid commitment to agriculture. Bell can prove it. To this day, every Bell Bank branch is partially built with rocks we've picked from our founder's farm. But our roots in ag have grown more than a few offices. They've shaped who we are and formed our entire approach to banking. Let us prove it to you as you grow your farm and prepare your legacy for the next generation. Bell Bank, committed to ag. Welcome back, everybody, to the Hole in One Show podcast. I tell you what, this segment has been a long time coming. I've got one of my best buddies, David Morgan, on the line. He's kind enough to join us tonight, and he's actually in Fargo, but he's at the airport. Dave, where is your? Where are you right now, and what's the situation? I am uh, standing in front of Gate Two, heading back to Minneapolis after coming up here for a few meetings. Well, uh, and I can't believe I was in Fargo and did not see you. I know that's unacceptable, really. But you're just uh, you popped in today and going back to the cities tonight. Now, background, Dave and I, Dave played college golf at the University of Minnesota. Now, Dave, real quick, touch on the fact that you essentially saved the program. Uh -huh, yeah, that goes back a ways from uh, to, uh, to, uh, 2002. Uh, we well, they announced they were going to cut men's and women's, men's and women's gymnastics men's women's golf at that point we started a fundraising campaign basically to save go for sports was the name of the fundraising campaign yep we then won big tens which is the the moment that we sort of saved the program yeah uh and then went on to do well in regionals and lo and behold won national sports, won the national really championship <laughs> they were to cut the program yeah. the university of minnesota then slow-mo dave morgan came in and saved the program <laughs> that's pretty cool now on that team yeah was Justin Smith, who's the current head golf, head golf coach, right? Yeah, I uh, I rode a lot of horses all the way in. I don't <laughs> think I saved the program. I think the I think the the main people that saved the program, I mean, Justin Smith, incredible player, Simon Nash, Australian, incredible player, Wilhelm Schaumann from Sweden, Matt Anderson from Edina. Yeah, that was the five that that played. Huge, um, huge. I just tried to I, I just tried to do my part and shoot my even par rounds at nationals. And, and well, we've been <laughs> we've been good buddies since then. We uh, started playing and traveling, playing some professional golf together, and we still connect yeah. once a year. And we play in the Johnny O Twin Fin down at Greyhawk in early January. A really cool event. A lot of tour players play. It's kind of uh, the guys that I guess if they don't win the year before and they're not in the uh, tournament of champions. They come and play that event. Yeah. And talk about your background tying into the U.S. Open. Uh, you've had a chance to play with Wyndham Clark, and you told me this guy's a stud and look out for him. And lo and behold, I, he's won twice I, in the last month. Yeah. So my first my first Johnny O. Twin Finn, uh, probably about five years ago before we 
before we partnered up. Yep. Um, Chris Case actually was my partner that year. He was a head pro out of a, a course out of the East Coast. And uh, we were paired with Wyndham and Pete Anello from that, that first round. Uh, actually made it the practice round and the first round. And I was like, oh, my Lord, this is something I don't see very often in golf. <laughs> and he was really good. Yeah. And I'm like, how is this guy not winning on tour yet? <laughs> That's what you told me. You know, I know you had to. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I've been on him since then. It's taken taken five years for him to get it, to get it all figured out um, mentally, I think, on the golf game. Short game is incredible. He hits it, you know, not like many people can hit it. And uh, lo and behold, this actually doesn't surprise me. It was a lot longer coming than... I would have thought, but you know, Dell that runs the event down there uh, is always, you know, kind of harped on Wyndham as being the best player in the field that has never won. And sure, that kind of came back real quick here with the Wells Fargo and now U.S. Open. What a performance! What did uh, did you what, did you watch the U.S. Open and what did you take from it? Uh, the takeaways. I thought he was clutch under under pressure uh, near the end, yeah. especially that three wood on fourteen. That was an unbelievable oh, second shot. Yeah, that was that was a massive shot, and then some of the up and downs he made. Were, Seventeen uh, charts, good. Seventeen, yeah, that chip. 17. And that, that, yeah, that's a touchy yeah, chip. For, and that, he, for the pressure yep. to do that chip on seventeen, and then the two putt on eighteen. Uh, I mean, an incredible performance. Uh, you know, it's, I was actually out there on Monday for the practice round. Of course uh, you were. Of course you were. <laughs> Morgan, you were everywhere. <laughs> I was I was working there for the record. Sure. But, uh, okay. And I snuck out for about three, four hours in the afternoon. The golf course looked incredible. It was firm, yeah. fast, hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I still kind of, I mean, that first round, they got a little bit of rain that morning, which I think let those scores get lower that first day. But other than that. That was the only day. Struggled to, you know, that was the only day they shot low. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, fan experience wise, it's kind of a unique golf course. It's just hard to get around. Mm-hmm. Um, it seemed fans. very corporate. And, and very, it was very corporate. It was very limited access. Yeah. Uh, you know, not the wild, raucous crowds we're used to seeing at a U.S. Open. Which is fun for uh, the viewers at home. Open the, fun for the viewers at home. You know, I think the players, you know, I, 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 well, they loved the course. I think, well, some of them did. Um, <laughs> I, you know, it's a different golf course than they, than they than they normally play, right? There's a little bit of a little bit of quirk to it, a little bit of blindness to it. It's a little old school. The ball bounces around, which they don't necessarily love. Yeah. But all in all, I think that most of the players liked it because it's got such a unique golf course that they don't really get to see very often on tour. You know, and in I, the U.S. Open. Yeah, and I liked the last three holes. There was some debate on that. I liked the the difficult last three holes. It had that U.S. Open feel where par was extremely valued yeah. coming down the stretch and under pressure. Yeah. I, I thought it was incredibly entertaining, and and Rory played, I think, so steady. So steady, and uh, I know it's been, he's been yeah, waiting he more than eight years to get, <laughs> get another major, get to his fifth major, but it was really entertaining, and Ricky was in there, obviously a fan favorite, so I thought it was a really entertaining golf tournament, and uh, I mean, I was glued to the TV, and it was on in prime time, right? Out on the out on the West Coast was great for uh, the game of golf. I was digging the late finish. Oh, for sure. Uh, I thought the West Coast finish was great. I mean, the, the first Saturday got a little too late. I mean, they were finishing in the dark, basically. <laughs> I was, it's like 1030 here in Minnesota. When well, I was in Minnesota, and I'm like, God, it's going to be almost dark out there almost. something. But um, they moved them up a little bit on Sunday, I know, I think, which was planned. But if there had been a playoff, it would been would have gotten dark pretty quick on Yeah, it. two-hole aggregate. That uh, would have been tight. The, the last three holes, uh, incredible golf holes. It's, it's wild when they made bogey on 15, which is the only bogey oh, of the day. On that's 15, incredible. Which is it's hard to even believe that's, I mean, the only bogey of the day there. I mean, it's still, I mean, it's a little wedge, but it's still not easy. And then, uh, yeah, 16, 17, 18, I mean, he was he, he held it together. It was it was got a little close there, but um, yeah. I thought when he missed that putt in 16, if, if Rory, I think, would have birdied 18, I think things it could have gotten really interesting. But yeah. Rory, well, just is, he's playing some great golf, just can't quite get, can't quite figure out the putter on Sunday. I mean, he's burning edges all day long, just didn't make anything. Well, Dave, you called it. You called it. When you've played with Wyndham, you knew he was uh, next level and he was going to be the next guy up. And, <laughs> and there, there, lo and behold, he's had a breakthrough month. And uh, Dave, I appreciate you being on the show. This is not going to be the only time. I know you got to get on a no, plane right now. No, we need more time next time. We've talked about this for years. Dave and Dave in the morning is what we joke that this should be. And let me tell you, we've had many radio shows. We've had many podcasts on that golf cart at the Johnny O. And this past year, it was very entertaining when we knocked one in for a hole-in-one. We had a time. Oh, we had a time, buddy. Best hole-in-one I've ever seen in my life. It was a beautiful, beautiful well, shot. Well, good to have you on, bud. Um, have a safe trip home, and, and thanks for being with us on the Hole-in-One Show podcast. Look forward to doing it again. You got it, pal. Thanks, Dave.
All right, folks, stay with us. Next, after the break, we've got Zach Scarprood and Rose Solberg, state champion on the girls' side and state runner-up on the boys' side, and both currently just won the Russ Newman Jr. Invitational. We'll be right back after this. Golf to me is patience. It's weird to say, but golf is life. It is. It's the ultimate game of life. You know, it's an individual sport. You have to put in a lot of work to get minimally better. That's kind of the beauty of it. You come back to improve. That's why I love golf is just every shot is is different. That next round, that next shot, you know it could be that start of a story. I don't even want to say a game. It's more than a game. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Hole in One Show podcast. It was great to have Dave Morgan on talking a little bit of U.S. Open, saving University of Minnesota golf, and a uh, little Wyndham Clark and, and uh, just how the L.A. Country Club held up under U.S. Open conditions. And, and it was a lot of fun to have Dave on the show. Thank you, Dave, for being here as you were trying to board your airplane. Uh, now, uh, I'm really excited to welcome in Zach Scarproot and Rose Solberg. Welcome to you two. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having us. We've got a state champ here, freshman. She won as a freshman, Class A, uh, plays for Davies. And we've also got a state runner up here in Zach Scarprood. Uh, it's just great to have you on the show. I can't wait to kind of dig into where you are in school, uh, playing so well in the state tournaments, obviously uh, also winning the Russ Newman Invitational. Both of you won that, and that's why you're here today. Uh, so let's start with Rose. Rose, get a little background about yourself, where you're at in school, and, and uh, some other details. Well, I'm going to be a sophomore in high school, um, and my brother plays for Davies as well. Yep. So... Makes it a bit more competitive than usual. <laughs> For sure, yeah. yeah. Um, How long have you been playing golf? Oh, I don't know. Pro- I started uh, tournaments in like as an eight-year-old. Wow. Yeah. And you won the state tournament as a freshman at Jamestown Country Club. Take us through uh, that whole tournament, and you know, how, how did you have the confidence to win as a freshman in high school? That's incredible. Not many people can say they've done that. Well, Leah Herbal did great the first day. She was even par, so I was trailing by three into the day, so I was just like, as long as I can try to catch Leah somehow, you know, it's in the Herbal blood to win. <laughs> so I was a little nervous. A couple of D1 golfers, right? Yeah, the they Twin are. sisters from yeah. the western part of the state. One is going to the University of Nebraska. The other one is going to, uh, going to Baylor. Both going to be playing in the Big 12, and they couldn't hang with the freshman from Davies. <laughs> Uh, well, I tried to hang with them. It was more like it. <laughs> well, congratulations. And then let's spin forward to the Russ Newman Jr. Invitational. We just hosted that at the Fargo Country Club. It's the state's best. Class A, Class B. You have to finish in the top 20 in your state golf tournament to get to the tournament. Uh, it was a good day of golf, and you ended up on top. Let's talk about that a little bit. Um, well, I had a great pairing with another Herbal. Yeah. So I was with Hannah that time and Avery Bartels. Um, we had a fun day out there. I was really scrambling. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, it was tough. Yeah. yeah. We set it up pretty difficult, and mm-hmm. you handled it. Uh, let's talk about uh, what, what's your, what are your aspirations for golf? You want to play college golf, I would assume. College golf coaches should be paying attention right now. Uh, where, where, where in a dream scenario would be able to go to college and play college golf? Well, I mean, the best programs, of course, are Stanford and Wake Forest, so I wouldn't say no to them. <laughs> are you are you actively reaching out to them already? Uh, no, no, especially with the NCAA rules. I don't want to ruin my eligibility. Okay. Oh, I'm so- <laughs> excuse me. I should know that. I, I'm, I'm old. I'm 40. I, I forget what the rules are. So when can they start reaching out to you? I mean, that's how about that? You won the state tournament and you have to wait to be able to reach out with, you know, your resume and things like that. When can you? Um, after your junior year, like in the summer at some point, I think they're finally allowed to. Okay. Okay. Well, they're going to get your cell phone ready (laughs) because they're going to be calling. Where's mom and dad want you to go? Um, my dad wants me to stay close so he can come to tournaments easier and all that. I bet he can make tournaments wherever they are. (laughs) Their dad, Mike Solberg of Bell Bank, obviously a friend of the show. Really appreciate their support and great product placement, by the way. Got it right on the sleeve. (laughs) <laughs> PXG and Bell Bank. I mean, you could. You want to co-host the whole in one show next year with me? <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say no. Again. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right, Zach. Uh, let's talk about you a little bit. You big golfing family and hockey family. The Scarp Roods are famous around this area for golf and hockey. Uh, what year are you in school? And let's recap the state tournament that just concluded a couple weeks ago. Yeah, so I'm going to be a senior in high school from Shanley, and um, yeah, so state went pretty well. First day, shot even. It was a couple under, and then got to a couple over. 
and then made it back to even. And then second day, went to a couple over, a couple back from Nate, and then Carson had a good run. Yeah. He was four under at the very beginning. Nice. And started turning around things, made two birdies in a row, and I was like two back or something like that, and made a bad bogey on 13 and kind of got me out of it. But you finished second. I did, yeah. That's a great tournament. Yeah. Uh, now you're spinning into, as as we alluded to with Rose, you're you're leading into your senior season. Now's the time, right? Now's the time where you're looking for schools. They're reaching out to you. Do you have a dream scenario where you'd love to go to school? Yes, I would like to go, honestly, anywhere. I just, my goal is to be Division One golfer. Yeah. So hopefully that. I think that's going to happen. Now you have two older brothers, Alex and Zach. What are Jake. they get? What, huh? Jake, Jake, so Alex and Jake. What are advice are they giving you? Because you've got one UND fighting hawk in the family, and then you've got one North Dakota State Bison. What's the story? Honestly, just play your best and let God do the rest, and just play your heart out. And in a, would you want to go further south, or would you like being in this area? I'd like to stay in this area. Yeah, like, yeah. Somewhere with a club hockey team, right? <laughs> I don't think so. Let's talk a little hockey. You won the state championship uh, this past year, and you were on the ice for the game-winning goal in overtime. Let's talk about what, uh, boy, that had to be quite a thrill. Yeah, it was amazing. So, you know, you had to uh, overtime with Red River. Your, your, your cousin was on the other team. Obviously, South, South Shanley, they co-op, and you, you play together. Um, let's just, just talk about the whole experience uh, in Ingolstadt Arena, and, or no, Shields Arena, and, and winning the whole thing. Yeah, it was at Ingolstadt Arena, actually. Okay. So it was actually great. The lower bowl was packed. Mm -hmm. You look around, and there's not one open seat in the lower bowl. And it was just awesome, great experience. And yeah. I just chipped out the puck to one of my buddies, and he went around the ice, or skated across the left side of the ice and scored top shelf, and honestly, I like couldn't remember the rest. Just I blacked just, out. Yeah. I just, <laughs> just celebrating. Yeah. It was, it was awesome. a great goal. It was it was well, it was very well executed. Did you get the assist on it? Because you should have. I did. I don't think they put it down, but I uh, got the no, secondary assist. You got the assist. Yeah. It, forever, forever and ever, when you talk about winning the state high school tournament, promise. Just tell me, Tell you got the assist. Yeah. You touched the puck. That was that was awesome. Um, let's talk about like who have you looked up to, both of you? Obviously, you've you've been playing from a young age. Who have you looked up to? Has it been in this area? Has it been somebody nationally? Uh, talk a little bit about that. Uh, you can go. Um, well, personally, my dad and my uncles, yeah. they've done a lot for me. And I don't know, they're they're pretty good at golf, so I look up to them a lot. Yeah, the family paved the way. Yeah. You got fighters in your family. You got a couple of bogeys, they're not going to go away. They're going to yeah. fight to the end, and that's a great, great trade on the golf course and anywhere, you know, anywhere in life. So, uh, how about you, Rose? Um, I'd say from a pro standpoint, Amy Olson's hard to yeah. beat in this area. Um, and I'd say Rose Zhang as well. Not just their names, but because she just has a great resume. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so, now we've got... If we have some junior golfers, we got kids all over the place at the FCC, right? I mean, you guys used to be those kids, and now you're growing up and playing in high school golf and competing at the highest level in the state of North Dakota and nationally. We've got a ton of kids, you know, 8, 12 years old, even younger. Who would you, what would you say to them? I mean, what kind of advice would you give them as, not only to them, but also their parents as they're coming up and want to compete at the high school level? Um, well, a big thing for me was, like, playing in a lot of tournaments before, so, like, when you finally get to that high school level, you're not as nervous and you've played in tournaments. Yeah, just a lot, you know, a lot of tournaments. I mean, you you were obviously comfortable at the state championship as a freshman, so you must have, how many tournaments did you play a year, you know, yeah. through your middle school years? Yeah, it, it was quite a lot. My parents definitely had some miles on their car. <laughs> yeah, for sure. How about Zach? Yeah, I'd probably say play the most as you can and agree with Rose, uh, play as much tournaments as you can too we don't get very many months to play so you gotta no. you gotta send it when you can right yeah mm -hmm. exactly well it's been great to have you on the show any any other um any other feedback from the rust newman junior invitational i mean you both have that to put on your resume mm -hmm. right which is incredible it, it, very important i mean this is your time where you can build your resume and win some tournaments or high placements that's got to help right yeah, yeah yeah for sure What'd you think of the shootout? We had a shootout and it's going to be, it's, you know, we did a two hour special that's going to be aired on KVOY later in August. So you're going to be on TV. The whole entire, you know, the entire field is going to have a shot at being on TV. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, what was that like to have the cameras around? It was awesome. I got out first round, which isn't the best, but it was still like awesome to watch and be a part of. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was definitely very nerve-wracking because my chipping's not great, and I put myself in some <laughs> positions where I needed to chip. <laughs> well, then we were filming everything, right? And I was yeah. pulling you aside and doing on-course interviews and things like that. So it's probably a little unnerving, but you both handled it great. I mean, to, to, to pull you aside and do some interviews, like they do on the PGA Tour now, right? And the yep. LPGA yeah. Tour. It's really interactive, and it was a lot of fun. So we got, some we got some information from you in the moment. I know, Zach, we were standing on the 16th tee, and we talked with all four guys on, all right, what's the play here? This is a risk-reward par four. Mm -hmm. Why are three of you holding drivers and one of you holding a five iron? And then we followed you along the hole and, and watched you play that hole. Now, we're going to put that on TV. What did you do on 16? That was pivotal. Yeah, it I was went. Pivotal. I went right by the shed and by the garbage can next to the gingerbread house. Yep, and it was a tucked right <laughs> pin, and I saw this spot. I'm like, I can't leave this one short, so I don't want another yeah. hard chip. And then I'm like, I got to get on the green or at least give myself a long putt. And I probably hit one of my best shots, probably my best shot of the day. Yeah, it was incredible. And lipped out and went to like ten feet, and I made the putt for birdie. That's awesome. Okay, what's up next? What's up? What's up this summer? What's the next tournament on the docket for you? Uh, well, I'm in the Red River Am this All right. weekend. And Another I'm televised <laughs> event. Yeah. You yes. just go, you, I'll just go where the TVs are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. That's great. Have you played the Morehead Country Club quite a bit? Uh, not too much. I'm hoping it likes me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it'll be firm and fast. I mean, it's been hot. We haven't had a lot of rain. Uh, I'm sure it'll be in great shape. And that's a three-day tournament, correct? Mm -hmm. that's all. And Zach, same? Yeah, I'm doing the same thing. I'm also doing the shootout on Thursday with Carson, my cousin. There you go. So that's going to be a good event. And your Carson, did I see today he just committed? He did. He committed to UND also. Okay. So you got your older brother, yep. Alex, and now your cousin. Are they going to pull you that way? I don't know. Hopefully. Coach Schaefer, he'll take you. Right? We'll find out. That's good. Well, good. Uh, best of luck in the River Amateur. Thanks for being here today on the inaugural Hold On One Show podcast. It was great to have a couple of champions like yourself here. Congrats on the Russ Newman Jr. Yeah, thank you. Congrats thank on the you. state tournament, playing well in the state tournament. And best of luck as obviously you still have a few years left to school working your way through. And best of luck, Zach, on, on your search and, and uh, the coaches' search. They should find you, which they will, uh, as you go on to the next level. Yeah, thank you so much. Have a great time. Keep being leaders and, and being people that uh, everybody else can look up to. Nice job. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, Dave. All right. And thank you for being here. That was the inaugural, like I said, Hole in One Show podcast. We're going to do this every week for the next six weeks. Have great guests every week. And uh, thanks for being with us. And we'll see you next time.